Well, how do there, chums? Design, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, is a Captain Steves Talks episode. Now, I was watching The Giver. It's a series that I suggested that you, my viewers, watch on last Friday. It's on my community tab if you want to go hit this up in full. But yeah, this is like episode 15. And there's a bit of narrative inside of this that made me think, what if they've got a point? What if there's some truth to this science fiction? Let's hit on up and play it on the old TV behind me and see what they've got to say. All right, then. If you think you're ready, I'll tell you everything I know. The truth behind the Giver units, the creators, and the Zoonoids. Including the truth behind humankind itself. There was a race of alien creatures who came to Earth from far beyond our galaxy. The creators. We know now that they manipulated the Earth's ecosystem over the course of several billion years in an attempt to give rise to a very specific kind of life form. They needed something with high intelligence, strong survival instincts, and the ability to adapt to any environment. A fearsome, aggressive life form meant to serve as a weapon. After countless years, a creature that could serve as a base for that life form was created. And those creatures were us. All of humankind. <sighs> You expect me to buy huh? that? You're telling us that we're nothing but a bunch of living weapons created by some alien race? That's what people are? It was difficult for me to accept as well, but it's true. <sighs> now that you mention it, Gyo talked about the exact same thing. That we were all made as the basis for a series of bioweapons. <laughs> it makes sense. After all, human history is built on conflict. We seem to have a powerful inclination towards war and brutality. Even now. Perhaps we're subconsciously fulfilling our purpose. It does make you wonder when What's you look going around. On here? It's like they don't even care. How can they just sit there and talk about this like it's nothing? It's sick. They've lost their minds. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe I'm the one who's losing it. That's how I feel sometimes with some conspiracies. Must be sad. Don't worry, they get back to it in a second. But he's a bad guy. You see, the Zoonoids are just normal humans who have been optimized for combat. Optimization is the process of artificially inducing genetic mutations in order to create a new form or augment a specific ability. Human attributes allow for the possibility of transformation from the default into a secondary form. Like However, werewolves. All Zoonoids are subject to the will of the Zoa Lords. Like Yo and Barkus, they can command large numbers of Zoanoids through psychic manipulation. Like the elites! And you have the same powers, because you are a prototype for Gyo's Zoa Lord form. That's correct. I was able to use those powers to destroy the Enzyme 2s, even if I couldn't break Barkus's psychic control over them. Just as Zoanoids are forced to submit to the Zoa Lords, the Zoa Lords are genetically programmed to demonstrate absolute obedience to the creators. But now, it's all history. In the end, humans were never used in combat. Shortly after completing their experiment, the creators departed from the Earth. Perhaps some interstellar war that they were involved in had drawn to a close. Or perhaps they were influenced by some outside force. Whoa. Unfortunately, their intentions have been buried beneath the sands of time. Created when mankind was abandoned before its true purpose could be realized. Left without the guiding hands of the creators, Optimized zoonoids crossbred with normal humans, and bit by bit, their legacy faded away. But there's still a chance that some of them survived. The monsters spoken of in folklore throughout the world may have been the descendants of those very zoonoids. <sighs> like reptilians and all that sort of chisel, and also, like I said, werewolves, perhaps. You know, it's. It's kind of plausible. Or when you sort of think of the, say, like the Anunnaki from Sumerian sort of clay tablets, they said that the creators came from the skies and created us to help with all sorts of weird shenanigans, perhaps as weapons as well. Who knows? But yeah, you know, it, it kind of makes you think. What if? What if we were created by aliens? Then what about the Givers? We already know that they're organic weapons. Were they created using humans as a base too? No, they're different. Originally, the Givers were to be used by the Creators. Creators? Believe it or not, they were standard equipment. As you know, 
The Giver unit fits itself to its host body, then optimizes their conditioning and enhances their physical capabilities. Even if the creators had been a group of many different alien races, the units would be able to adapt to each of their needs. It may be the most versatile weapon ever created. And then the creators had an idea. What if they equipped a human being with a Giver unit? They were probably interested to see what would happen if two different living weapons were combined. It was like a game to them. However, they got far more than they bargained for. The bio-boosted human exhibited power that was hundreds of times greater than when the creators themselves donned the unit. But what was more terrifying to them than anything else was the fact that the Giver unit freed its host from their mental control. They had accidentally created a monster far more powerful than the Zoonoids that was no longer subject to its master's commands. The this is interesting because inside of the Quran it mentions a race called the Jinn that were hyper destructive, or a lot of them were, and they had their physical sort of form stripped from them and banished to another dimension by the creators, by the God. You know, so yeah, um, well, Allah inside of the Quran. But they got me thinking what if you was to replace the word God and replace the word angels and demons and anything like Jinn and things like that with a simple word, alien? Or instead of having the word God or Allah or anything like that, replace it with the, the concept of mothership. If you did that throughout the whole of the Bible, what would it look like then, people? And that's what today's video is about. Could it be that all the religious doctrines, all these religious books, just didn't have the word or concept or mindset for alien or origins outside of our own planet? Could it be that if you do replace all of those, that things start to make a lot more tangible sense? We're going to dive into that today, people. I know, it's weird. It's not like I normally do, is it? No. <laughs> so here we go. I've just flicked over the old channel on the old TV set. So I'm kind of thinking, what if all the different sorts of biblical stories that we get right from the start of the Bible, like the whole story of creation. Now, God inside of, say, the Bible created the world within seven days, people inside the view of us. Now, is there any sort of technology that could do that? Now, if there was an alien mothership that had some terraforming technologies on board, perhaps, perhaps there could be people inside the viewerverse. You know, it could be a thing. So anyway, let's just jump over to a different view. So behind me right now is an alien mothership doing said terraforming on a planet. But what if you know, God also created the, go the Garden of Eden and created Adam and Eve? But what if you just replace the word God, as I mentioned, with alien mothership? The story of creation sort of gets another sort of slant with here. I'll move over a little bit so you can see my images a little bit better. But yeah, Garden of Eden re-represented under the guise of maybe some sort of you know, terrain manipulation and uh, terraforming. I mean, we plan to terraform Mars one day, don't we? So if we can do it to Mars, why couldn't an alien race have done it to the Earth? And rather than Adam and Eve being created through godly powers, what if it was done through genetic manipulation? What if it was done by these aliens and that created human life from the actual creatures on found on the planets, so the primates, and then mixed it with alien DNA to come up with humans on this planet? It would kind of make sense. And the Sumerians, inside of their clay tablets that they actually recorded, they actually record a double helix, almost like genetic mutation. And inside the Sumerian clay tablets, they do claim that the gods, the Anunnaki, came from the stars and created mankind upon this world. To what ends, we're not 100% sure. But yet, it could be that we've been created, created for reasons unknown. I mean, inside of that actual makeup, inside of evolution history, it kind of shows a mutation that still science has no real sort of idea behind. And then when you pass on this to all sorts of biblical accounts, when you think of, say, you know, any time that anybody had a religious encounter, it's always beams of lights from the heavens with flying beings or beings that came from the heavens. Now, they could just be depicted having wings to depict that they were flying. They might not have had wings at all. They may have been transported here by ships that flew. It's like a lot of the Hindu sort of gods, they look quite alien in makeup anyway. With blue skin, pink skins, multiple arms, strange heads, but then so too 
do the gods of like you know the Egyptians some have like got giant sort of dog heads or even bird heads or whatever and you see that echoed inside of some of the Sumerian clay tablets with strange fantastical beasties like a horse with wings with then a person's head and again you also hear that sort of echoed inside of the Quran with the creature that took Muhammad up to the heavens again it was some sort of donkey-ish type creature with wings that also had a human head and was able to talk. Samson even rode on a ride in, uh, on a, a donkey with voice. So who freaking knows? And then when you turn to the actual Bible and you see the angel Gabriel coming down from a beam of light to speak to Mary, and then Mary comes a bearing child, was she one of the first abductees ever recorded inside of history that we know of? It could be that Jesus was some kind of alien hybrid, explains why he could do miracles. Now the Bible also talks of like the Nephilim, like angels that laid with humans. So did that excerpt from that clip that we saw over and that um, bloodline has been diluted. But there are the blue bloods. They are the, the actual race or other people inside of our history, current history, that have got RH negative bloodlines. And it's like the royal bloods of England. Apparently they're RH negative and got this royal bloodline that they want to keep intact. Anybody that joins the royal household has to be thoroughly vetted to show that they are part of the blue bloodline. It does make you wonder, people, if there might be more truth to this, even in modern era. You know, if we were to see UFOs now, I mean, would we see them in the same way as they did in ancient times? So yeah, it's just a thought-provoking little bit of information there, people. What if, what if the biblical accounts, Bible, the Torah, the Quran, or any other religious doctrine, are all saying the same thing? It was aliens. If you just make those subtle changes to those books, do they make more sense? Or does it sound more like Scientology when you go down that route, people, or Mormonism, or any other newfangled sort of religion that seems to be emerging right now? You know, I feel that religion has got its place, and I feel that it helps people with having a moral compass. I've got nothing against religion, people. I'm just putting this out there that I watched the Gaiva, a freaking manga cartoon, and it played with my mind a bit to say, could there be some truth to this? Could that actually be a real creation story? And that led me to ancient alien sort of conspiracy theories that I've visited in the past, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to put this out there. I'm going to put that out there as a thought-provoking video for my community. Enjoy! Hopefully you did enjoy it, people. Um, my cup is actually empty. It took me a while to put together all these graphics and mess about. I drank my tea while I was putting it together. So it is a cup of tea with Captain Steve episode, apart from the glass is empty. Anyway, people, if you've enjoyed this and it has stirred up a bit of thought for you or entertained you in any way, shape or form, please hit on up in the comments, hit a like, hit a subscribe, and if you want, share it out. I don't know where you'd put this video. I don't even know where I'm going to put it playlist-wise. It's probably going to go in the Captain Steve's talk sort of bucket. But it's just thought-provoking. Uh, just something that was in my head, and now it's in yours. <laughs> Take care. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again.